What's going on, everyone? So I saw this headline, and it got me thinking. Would Christian Wood make the Lakers title favorites? Now, I want to say yes as a Laker fan, right? Diehard Laker fan. As somebody that has a Laker channel, you're listening to it right now. Um, also, the media and Vegas very well might make them title favorites or kind of present it as a title favorite. But if we take a step back, right, there's a lot that goes into being the title favorite, to be the guy or the team that would more than likely win the NBA championship. And the Lakers already are a title contender. And the Lakers, absolutely with Christian Wood, would be a more favorable title contender, without a doubt. I mean, the Lakers are already deep, they're already stacked, they're already talented, and you're adding a 17-7 and guy that has versatility and can be a legit scorer for the Lakers. Of course, there's value in that, right? This is a guy that, especially at a vet minimum contract, like, come on, of course. Christian Wood, even with all his flaws, even with all his question marks, even with all his concerns, if Christian Wood works for the Lakers, the Lakers are going to be terrifying. There's probably only like three other teams that I think can beat the Lakers or, or at least come close. Now, I've also said in the past, if... Anthony Davis, if we get bubble Anthony Davis, even with the current roster, nobody's beating that team. Like, without Christian Wood, remove Christian Wood. If we get 2020 Anthony Davis with this current roster, there's not a team in the league I think beats the Lakers in a seven-game series. That's my thoughts and opinions. But does that make them the title favorite? No, because there's a lot of unknowns when you're talking about title favorites. Christian Wood added to the Lakers solves a lot of those unknowns a lot of question marks right and it just gives them another reliable consistent guy that they can also dump the ball down to at times right we saw how stagnant the Lakers offense could get at times all teams in the league get that I mean even the Celtics uh, who were top five in offense uh, even they struggled offensively at times but that comes with you know just the the flow of the game right guys get cold it's you know uh, basketball is a game of runs so you go on runs, you get cold, all stuff. But having a guy in Christian Wood that you can just dump the ball down to, let him go to work and generate a bucket. Uh, same thing with Ruby Hachimura I've talked about, but for whatever reason, last year they didn't really put him in a position to do that. Hopefully they do this year, but I digress. Um, I think that Christian Wood would help in that department. And when you look at the Lakers roster, again, it's stacked. We're big, we're talented, we're versatile, we're switchable. We're, In my opinion, we are the deepest team in the league. And I don't even think that that's really debatable. I mean, what team in the league is as deep as this Lakers team? Maybe the Clippers, you can argue, right? Because they, they're really deep as well. But outside of that, like, most teams are... I mean, even Denver, who won the championship last year, were only like six guys deep, seven guys deep. I mean, their seventh and eighth guy was a rookie in Braun, and then uh, Jeff Green, who was in limited play. So, I mean, they were really just like the starting five and then the sixth man. And then you look at all the other teams, like Boston and the 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 Bucks and stuff. Like, they have guys... They have some guys like that are just names on paper, too, that are pretty solid, but like they're not what they used to be. And how much are they going to play? Like... The Lakers are legit, like, 13 players deep right now. And if they add Christian Wood, that's another player. So now they're 14 deep, and they probably fill out their 15 spot with whomever. It's just, all of these guys are extremely playable. All of these guys could absolutely have an impact. Like, this is a roster, like, LeBron could sit the rest of the year, and I still think the Lakers would be a top 5 or 6 seed. I do. I think if you just took Anthony Davis and the rest of this roster, this is a good enough roster to make you... A, a legit playoff team. Same thing if you took off Anthony Davis. If we get another big, that is. I think same thing. Like, if everyone's healthy, I think the Lakers would be a top five, six seed in the West. Um, and I think even, I'll even press push it further, I think if you took off LeBron James and Anthony Davis off this roster, this team would at least be, at worst, a play-in team. Like, I think that they would at least make the play in because again you have a lot of really good and talented guys you got D'Angelo Russell who is a bona fide 17 and 5 and 5 guy right and he's more than capable if he was like the number one or number two option of being a 20 plus point a game guy we saw that in Brooklyn Austin Reeves is very likely going to be probably an 18 point a game guy if not 20 point a game guy you got Rui Hachimura who's more than capable scoring 20 points right you got defense sides versatility you got Torian Prince you got Gabe Vincent 
You got Cam Reddish. You got all of these guys that can give you 10 points a game each on a nightly basis, if not more. I think that this is a team that can absolutely make a play-in spot. But luckily, we have LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And again, they are without a doubt a contender. They are at least a top three team in the Western Conference. I mean, right now, they are favored in that regard. I think they're third in the West right now as far as uh, coming out of the West. And then I think they're sixth overall. Um, and you look at the you look at the rosters in the NBA, right? And you you kind of go through it all, and it's like okay, like the Phoenix Suns on paper are terrifying, right? Like the Phoenix Suns on paper, if I remove my bias as a Laker fan, are the best team in the league, right? I mean, you're talking about four legit All Star level players that can all score thirty on any given night. Right, like two guys could take the night off, and you're still really good, and still probably winning a lot of basketball games, right? Like they are, without a doubt, should be the title favorites, right? If you're talking about just because that's all it is, like title favorites, it's paper, it's a paper uh, metric, and so you look at that. Okay, I I have no problems with them saying that, but again, there's a lot that goes into that: health, chemistry right? Defense, offense, uh, you know, how, how is the coaching? Oh, how, how do the dominoes fall over the course of your run, right? Take a team like the Warriors even. Every year, even through the Warriors dynasty, they had things that benefited them and fell in their lap. Players getting hurt, right? Even in the, the Sacramento series this year, right? Like what happens? De'Aaron Fox gets hurt and that entire series changed. Otherwise, who knows what happened? And that's just how things go, right? All teams benefit from it. It's not like a huge deal. But there's so much that go into it. And because the Lakers are essentially, in a lot of ways, a brand new team, it's hard to say that they're the favorites over a team like the you know Milwaukee Bucks and the Boston Celtics, primarily because they have been together for so long. Milwaukee has won a championship, Boston has at least been to the finals, and every year they're an Eastern Conference Finals team. The East is also a lot easier to get through than it is the Western Conference, so that also helps as well. You know, so when you look at everything, you look at all the rosters, same thing with the Nuggets, right? The Nuggets are definitely worth uh, that notion because the, the Nuggets are a team that just won the championship, and they've been together for a while. So you have at least three teams that have more experience than the Lakers, that are, at least on paper, relatively as good, right? I, I like I don't think the Celtics, the Nuggets, or the Bucks are far and away better than the Lakers. I think the Lakers have be- a better overall roster than all of them. Again, that's my opinion. Maybe that's my biases. But you add Christian Wood to that, then that's just another guy that's comparable, right? That's another guy that stacks up to the other team's rosters. But I chemistry is a big thing. I mean, that's what made the 2020 Laker roster so successful. This was a team that was so bonded, so, you know, they loved each other. They played for each other. You know, they were having movie nights. They were living their best lives, right? Like, and, and that's why, like, when they when everyone went into the bubble, Right, you had teams that just kind of fell apart, but the Lakers were great. The Lakers were fine. They didn't miss a beat because they they had each other. You know, they were hanging out together. They were going to each other's hotel rooms. They were best friends, and you didn't have that as much with other teams. And you saw that translate. And it's not like the Lakers were like the you know the Heat this year where they were the eighth seed and it was like, oh man, that was an anomaly. No, they were the number one team in the league going into the bubble. And so, like, but they were able to build that chemistry, and they were able to do it in a year. So if the Lakers add Christian Wood, I think talent-wise, the only team that you can say is more talented than the Lakers are the Phoenix Suns. Because, again, you're talking about Kevin Durant, talk about Bradley Beal, talk about Devin Booker, and you're talking about DeAndre Ayton, right? Like, all four of those guys compared to our 
four or five best guys are just, they're ahead, okay? But, again, how does that look? They don't have a point guard. Bradley Beal is going to be their point guard. Is he going to be able to be a distributor and still be effective on the offensive side? You know, Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, how are they going to look uh how are they going to look uh, defensively? How are they going to look depth-wise? If one or two of those guys get hurt, they're in trouble. They're not winning a championship, right? I mean, seriously, if if Kevin Durant and Devin Booker get hurt, the Phoenix Suns are, I mean, they might not even make the play in, right? At Bradley, Be- at Bradley Beal and Kevin Durant get hurt. I don't know. I, who's to say that they don't, you know, they don't end up being a play-in team? I mean, I'm talking about missing significant time. I'm not talking about like, oh, they missed a week. I'm talking about like if Bradley Beal misses like three months and so does Kevin Durant, the Phoenix Suns might be in trouble, right? So the only team talent-wise that would be comparable with Christian Wood would be the Phoenix Suns, right? But there's just too many questions. The Lakers roster undoubtedly should fit like a glove. It should be smooth sailing. Right? Like, you can't say the same thing about the Suns. Boston's roster, I don't think, is better overall than the Lakers. I don't think that they have better overall talent. Now, Boston fans might feel otherwise. Some people listening to this might say, you know, well, you're a Laker fan. Of course, you're going to say that. But no, I mean, seriously, the Boston Celtics, look, I'm not saying the Boston Celtics have, like, some bum team. Like, the Boston Celtics are really good. They got Chris Porzingis. But I think the loss of Marcus Smart is going to hurt them a lot more than they realize. Because he was like the leader. He was the vocal guy. He was the guy that, he was kind of the glue to that roster. Can Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown step up? And both of those guys disappeared countless times, right? Kristaps Porzingis is great, but he's been injury prone. And then beyond that, you have, outside of those three guys, you have Derek White, who's really good. You got Malcolm Brogdon, okay. Robert Williams, okay. Al Horford, right? That's four guys. Now, some people may say Peyton Richardson, right? Okay, fine, I'll give you that. So they are eight guys. They are eight guys deep. Again, the Lakers are 13. And I think if you stack them all, right, I think the Lakers have a better front eight than the Celtics do. Let's say I'll I'll even give the Celtics a little little courtesy. Let's say Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum wash out Anthony Davis and LeBron James. I don't personally think so, but let's do that. Okay, then your your next players in line are Austin Reeves and Chris Porzingis. I think Austin Reeves will have a bigger overall impact on the Lakers than Chris Porzingis will for the Celtics, right? It's hard to compare them down the list because they're completely different players. You want to argue Chris Porzingis is the better player? Sure, but that doesn't mean he'll have the bigger impact. But... Okay, let's say that they wash out, right? Then you have, what, Derek White, and let's say, again, we get Christian Wood. I think that that, I think Christian Wood, Derek White is a very good defensive player. He's very good at what he does, right? But Christian Wood is a legit 17-8 and eight guy who's 6'10 and can do multiple things. And as much as people talk badly about his defense, he was actually very serviceable defensively with Troy. So if he can just be serviceable, then I think he's that player. D'Lo and Brogdon. D'Lo, is, Brogdon's got him on the defensive side, but D'Lo's a much overall better player. He always has been. You know, D'Lo, as much as people like to have recency bias, he is. Rui Hachimura is a better overall player than Robert Williams. You know, and then Al Horford. Okay, like Al Horford, his impact is significant on the Celtics. I'll give him for the impact. But player-wise, he's not the guy he once was. So, same thing with the Bucks, right? The Bucks, they have a really good 8-deep. I'm not going to go into all of it again, but you get my point, right? I just think... I think that they move up to third in... Or, we'll say fourth, right? Because, yeah. I'll say that they are the top four teams in the NBA with Christian Wood, right? Because... Denver, the Celtics, and the Bucks all have the chemistry and experience together. It's the only thing the Lakers would be lacking. If the Lakers build that chemistry and experience, I think the Lakers are the title favorites. I think they are the best team in the league. Front to back. The only thing they're lacking is health and chemistry. 
What else do they need? Nothing. If they get Christian Wood, they will have everything. They will be fine. So if we can get Christian Wood and the chemistry looks right by the trade deadline, I think that they deserve to be the title favorites. But anyway, those are my thoughts and opinions. And as always, I pass the question on you. Let me know yours down in the comments below. Do you agree? Disagree? How do you feel? Love you.